Damn, son, where'd you find this? Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. But that's all I'll ever be. Whatever. This, this, this should be played at high volume. Preferably in a residential area. No! Happy Hot Topic! Hoppy, this is Hoppy Hour. Hi, what's going on? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, hanging out with you for the next hour. You can always leave me a voicemail, 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And my email is Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. We are heard on Z Radio Live at ZRadioLive.com every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time. We are also featured on the Quad Pod Network, QODPOD.com slash Ryan Hoppy. This show that you're listening to, Hoppy Hour, it's for the hardworking average Joe and James. Yes, I said James too. That grind in life. They're hardworking and they need some entertainment. They need a show to listen to that'll just bring the laughter. <laughs> and that's what Happy Hour provides, man. So let me know what you think of this show. Kendall Jenner got emotional watching her boyfriend Devin Booker play in the NBA Finals, and fans love seeing this side of Kenny. Ah, uh, finally, a Jenner, a person that's banging one of the Jenners, finally achieved success. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, my God, all the NBA players and all the rappers that went downhill after banging a Kardashian or Jenner. <laughs> Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns has broken that. And uh, he's killing it. Let's get into it. Kendall is into it. Kendall's man, Devin Booker, had a big night this week as he played. Yeah, he had a big night. Game one during the NBA Finals with his team, the Phoenix Suns, against the Milwaukee Bucks. One Kendall fan account shared Kenny cheering on as she watched her man play, writing, Kendall Jenner watching the Suns vs. Bucks game and supporting Devin Booker. And How creepy are those like news accounts on uh, Twitter? Like, Nicki Minaj news! Mm-hmm. Kendall Jenner news! Like, Jesus Christ, you're running a fan site about a celebrity. Get a life. And apparently it was quite a moment for Kendall. She mm. posted on her Instagram story, I'm not emotional, you are. Well, no, you're emotional. Looking into the court from way up. And before that, we saw Kendall getting ready for the game rocking orange, which, yes, is a trendy color. Oh, I thought she went to prison. But it's also the color of her man's team. We stand a color-coordinated supportive girlfriend. And thank goodness the... All righty, so she got really emotional over Devin Booker making it to the NBA Finals. Kendall Jenner seems to have this whole Kardashian thing locked up. And what I mean by that is she has it figured out. The rest of the Kardashians, you got Chloe, you got Courtney, you got Kim, they're all again, and you got to remember, Kylie, they're all again pregnant, having kids, going through relationship after relationship, watching all these NBA players and rappers become irrelevant. But then comes Kendall, this beautiful angel. Yeah, she kind of ruined Ben Simmons, but whatever. Uh, but with Devin Booker, all of a sudden, Kendall Jenner, this beautiful angel, comes in and just breaks that record of Annie Kardashian ruining somebody. Because ever since he's began his journey, man, of having sex with Kendall Jenner, Devin Booker's been on top of the role. He's been killing it, man. So Good for him. What a life. <laughs> Playing in the NBA finals, banging a Kardashian, you know. That's just the life that we all dream of. When we're laying in bed at night, we go, we want to be a guy named Devin Booker who bangs a lot of women. Oh, I'm sure he never cheats on Kendall because all the NBA players, they never cheat. <laughs> Drake Bell just revealed he's married and has a son. <gasps> You've really grown up in this industry. For you, what was this? This is a clip from 2019, by the way. This is Secret a to really coming out the other side. <laughs> Um, you know, always just paying attention to uh, and being focused on the craft, really. 
God, he sounds like a pedophile. <laughs> God, that answer? Oh, God. Always just paying attention to uh, and being focused on the craft, really. On the craft, on the craft. Get away from all these teenagers that creep. The 35-year-old Nickelodeon actor took to Twitter to reveal he's just on the craft, really. Yeah, on the craft. The 35-year-old Nickelodeon actor took to Twitter to reveal he's married and has a child amid his recent legal woes. <laughs> That's one way to put it, legal woes. <laughs> Bell, who's been calling himself Drake Campana since 2020. Oh, he's so edgy and wild. He changed his last name. Whoa, a celebrity changing their name. Oh, how innovative. Tweeted the news in Spanish. Oh, wow, you're so cool. Go hang out with Hilaria Baldwin. The translated message reads, quote, in response to various rumors that are incorrect, I have been married for almost three years and... And you've done a pretty good job of keeping it quiet. Why? Because no one's really, no one's really going, oh my God, what the hell is going on with Drake Bell? So it's been pretty easy to keep your relationship quiet because nobody's really cared. We are blessed to be the parents of a wonderful son. Thank you very much to all my fans around the world for your... Oh yeah, all the fans from 2010. Your good wishes. Bell's statement comes after he was spotted. I mean, who the hell goes, oh, my God, I am such a fan of Drake Bell's recent work. Yeah, he was good on Drake and Josh, which is a typical sitcom. But no one's going, oh, my God, his body of work since that show. Oh, he's such a talented fellow. Blessed. And I would so want him to date my daughter. He's got no skeletons in the closet that are incorrect i have been married for almost three years and we are blessed to be the parents of a wonderful son thank you very much to all my fans around the world oh, for your yeah. good wishes bell's statement comes after he was spotted with his wife janet von schmeling who he's been romantically linked to for the past few years and a baby stroller at disneyland <laughs> i'm confused man what a weird guy I have a girlfriend. She's pretty rad. She is in the industry. Uh, she was actually just on this cool Porn? little uh, Snapchat uh, show called uh, Snapped for uh, BuzzFeed. But yeah, she's, you know, she's, she's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. In the industry, she's rocking it, trying. Back in 2017, Bell opened up about his now wife to E.T. Yeah. And revealed how they met. Oh, how? Just mutual friends. Yeah. I was. Uh, That's I, how it usually works. It was um, a friend of mine, uh, his daughter. Uh, was <laughs> He's such a creepy guy, the way he goes, yeah, and then his daughter. I, Jesus Christ. was out visiting, and then she was friends, and we were all just hanging out. And yeah, we're just hanging out. I was like, hey, you're really cool. And she yeah. thought I was pretty cool, too. Get over here! But when asked if his lady inspires any of his music, he played coy. Everyone in, in my life inspires my music. Yeah. I don't think that there, I, I, you know, there's not one specific love song. Well, the thing we need to know is who inspired you to be a creep? Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Oh, I'm Drake Bell. I'm such a talented guy. Yeah. I totally. I'm not just, you know, living off of one thing. Mm hmm. Hoppy Hour will be right back. But I'm right here. This following segment was brought to you by FitsageFitness.com. Oh, I feel alive right now. Why? Because I worked out with FitsageFitness.com. That would be Devin Prasad, who you can add on Instagram, fit underscore sage underscore fitness. And if you go to FitsageFitness.com and you live within the Tampa Bay area, you can work out with them and tell them I sent you. But if you're not in the Bay Area, you can do virtual workouts and there's an app. For all the info. FitzHFitness.com. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Someone hook me up with a flame. I'm having a look for. Uh, light him up. Meatwad. Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my rooster. I'm going to tear up. We shall acquire some wine on the way to the mall. And then you can get tore up. And pass out in the hot sun. That's my boss. I don't think Meatwad should be hanging around with these moon people. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too.
is in the process of removing all 100 plus tattoos from his body as he yeah you know <laughs> he was very manic when he got those tattoos and now that he's probably on clonopin and just getting high and thinking about his life he's looking at his tattoos and he's like you yeah. As he reveals he'll finally be ink free by the time he turns 30. Let's he'll look all washed up. He'll look like a piece of bread that's been out in the sun all day. Get into it. There's no denying that Pete Davidson's large collection of body art has become a huge part of his trademark style. Of what? I don't know. White trash? But now that he's getting more serious about his acting career, he's ready to turn the page. Oh, thank and God. I was so worried. I was hoping. I've been so worried hoping that Pete Davidson would remove his tattoos. Oh, we finally got the resolution. We were able to manifest the answer. Because now you will be able to sleep at night. And what better way for Pete to take on this long and painful procedure yeah. than poking fun at himself and even capitalizing on it while having it done? Pete is <laughs> hilarious. Regret in the flesh as he sits through a laser removal session for a new smart water ad that rolled out on Monday. Mm -hmm. In the entertaining TV spot, we also see Pete coming clean about other regrets in his life, like his modeling stint, living in his mom's basement until his late 20s, and giving up on walking for hoverboarding. And though Pete is shown getting his tat zapped in the commercial, he revealed in an interview with People TV that it's actually been about four or five months since his last sesh. Pete and I don't care anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, every chick that dates Pete Davidson, though, they just think, I'm going to be the one to get rid of his crazy. And you know he's fun at first. He's kind of wild. Pete Davidson's kind of edgy. He's crazy. You don't know what you're going to get. The human side or the sociopathic side. Oh, yeah. Hanging out with Pete Davidson. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> And you know all the women going in think he's a rebel. They think he's a bad boy. They think he's an edge. They think he's crazy. You'll never guess what Pete Davis is going to do. But then that gets old real fast. You know it gets old within two weeks. Like even by the third day of hanging out, you're like, oh, this, guy's gotta go. this guy has a lot of quirks. But he's got a big schlong. But then about 10 days in, you really begin to notice that Pete Davidson is crazy. Mm -hmm. It's been reported that Rihanna's Los Angeles home was recently broken into, and though cops arrived at the scene, unfortunately, the trespasser got away. Damn it. Let's get into what happened. Right. Another day, another celebrity who's a victim of a home invasion. God, I mean, can you imagine, like, when you're a celebrity and you're hanging out in your house, like, you're never really safe. You know what I mean? Like, Especially if you're like a Rihanna, it's probably not hard to find the address. So you got all these creepy fans out there, all these weird fans out there that would love to meet you. And it's got to be kind of weird, even though you got top notch security, even though you got a mansion on top of Hollywood Hills or wherever the hell rich people are out there, Malibu, whatever, Beverly Hills, that's where I want to be. Hit me. Living in Beverly Hills. Oh, but if you're Rihanna, wherever the hell you're living, to know at any moment that a fan could just come into the house. She's probably more likely to be broken into than like an average Joe because like average Joes don't really get, it. you know what I'm saying? This time, it was one of Rihanna's L.A. homes that was targeted by criminals. And according to TMZ, it all happened last week mm -hmm. as an unwanted visitor was seen hopping over one of her perimeter walls. Got it. The media outlet reported that cops were called to the scene around 7 a.m. by Rihanna's own security team, but it was already too late by then. Okay. The trespasser was long gone when law enforcement finally showed up, so all they could do was take a report. However, they are said to still be investigating the alarming incident. Okay. Lucky for Rihanna. Yeah, I don't think they're just going to like pack up and go home. Yeah, I think there would be some just some DNA that would get taken from the scene. Like if this happened to any average Joe, you know, they would uh, talk to a few people, get a few fingerprints, and then leave. But when Rihanna, not an everyday average Joe from Omaha, but when Rihanna's house gets broken into, they'll do whatever they got to do. They'll even hire Sherlock Holmes from the dead. 
Because when it happens to Rihanna, that's a big deal. As she wasn't home at the time her property was breached and TMZ revealed that she doesn't actually live in that house at the moment, but rather rents it out despite owning it. Oh man, what a life. Also, Riri has been spending these last few weeks in New York, constantly being spotted out and about with her boyfriend, ASAP Rocky. Oh yeah, he's laying the pipe. Just this Monday night, Rihanna was snapped by Pap stepping out wearing this head-turning lingerie-like look and- Oh, what a head-turner. It looks like any other dress. Layered strands of pearls. I'm not saying she doesn't look good in it, but oh, what a head-turner. Her just dressed up for the night. Though ASAP wasn't photographed with her this time around, just a few weeks ago, heartwarming footage of the couple started making the rounds where we saw ASAP literally sweeping Rihanna off her feet while on a date in New York City. Oh, how romantic. Okay, so circling back to the main topic at hand. Which I don't remember and I don't care. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. Duggar and Michelle Duggar are speaking out for the first time about the end of Let me officially rewind that. I don't know why it began. So weird. Jim Bob Duggar and Michelle Duggar are speaking out for the first time about the end of their long-running reality show. How are they going to dodge all the things that are going to be asked by them? You know, like whatever they're going to be asked about has been answered already by their lawyer, by their team. You're not going to get a genuine answer from Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar. They're not really genuine people. Whatever is answered about what's going on has been written by their lawyer, has been written by their publicist. You don't think that Jim Duggar and Michelle Duggar, you don't think that they um, always make sure that they present themselves in a good light in public? You're never going to see them going up there doing a monologue. So whatever the hell Jim Bob and Michelle say is not genuine. The TV personalities issued their first statement on TLC's decision to cancel Counting On in the wake of child pornography charges against their son, Josh Duggar. Jim Bob and Michelle issued a statement on the family's website on Saturday. Took about 20 minutes to write. Saturday, sharing gratitude for the opportunity to chronicle their lives on television for so many years. Oh, thank God you exploited your family for ratings. Oh, what the chronicles you were just up to, man. Oh, the chronicles you were producing. Oh, so innovative. And calling the experience miraculous. Yeah, it was miraculous. No one really cared, and somehow you guys got famous. The couple went on to acknowledge that being public figures hasn't always been easy. No yeah, you, you don't say... Doesn't seem to be helping out Josh. Oh, it's not easy being public figures where we claim to be these perfect human beings, but in reality, we're all deviants. It's been kind of hard trying to hide that we're just crazy and wild, man. Noting that having an audience for the ups and downs of their journey may have been difficult at times, but it was always rewarding. Yeah, here comes the money. Money, money, money. That's why it was rewarding. Not the morals or moments you got to have with God. None of that was going on with these people. They just love the money. And I would love the money too. Writing in part, since we began filming so long ago, we've had the amazing honor to share our lives, our faith, and our story with you, including some of the most difficult and painful moments our family has ever faced. Like our uh, pedophile son. Uh, oh, you've done such a good job of documenting the difficult and painful moments. But when your son gets caught being a pedophile, oh, we're going to cancel the show. We were so genuine with you guys when everything was going pretty good, even when he was on Ashley Madison. Everybody cheats, not at all. But literally, oh, but now... He's a pedophile. Oh, we got to cancel the show. Prior to that, we've always been genuine with you. No, not at all. We are full of deep gratitude for the love shown to us and the prayers of so many who have sustained us both now and through the years. Can you imagine praying for them? Man. TLC confirmed earlier this week that the hit spinoff would not return amid Josh's scandal. But the they got to document their journey for us because they're so because they're so genuine. The network told Access Hollywood in a statement, TLC will not be producing additional seasons of Counting On. TLC feels it is important to give the Duggar family the opportunity to address their situation privately. Essentially, get essentially what they are saying is get the hell away from us. Counting On stars Ginger Duggar and Jeremy Wolo also spoke out about the cancellation, writing in part on social media. 
We wholeheartedly agree with TLC's decision to not renew Counting On and are excited for the next chapter in our lives. Uh, what's the next chapter? Oh, we're going to be realtors. How exciting. We'd like to thank our fans, friends, and the amazing film crew who have shown us love and support. We look forward to continuing our creative journey in Los Angeles and seeing what the future Oh, yeah, we're going to be the creative people in those board meetings because we're the Duggars. And we're so creative. Oh, we're the best. The way we exploit our families. Really innovative TV. The future holds. The couple also thanked TLC for the opportunity, calling their time on air, quote, a remarkable journey. We made a lot of money. We made a lot of money. Counting On was a spinoff of TLC's 19 Kids and Counting and yeah. followed the lives of many of the older Duggar children and their partners. It ran for 11 seasons, concluding last September. Do you ever think about just how fake reality TV is in the way that... Like, when you're watching it and it's showing, like, 100 million kids in this family, how are you going to ever really act like yourself, act in the reality that you're in? If there's cameras around you all the time, because reality shows are scripted. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour will be right back. But I'm right here. Uh, this following segment was brought to you by Amir Academy on Martial Arts. For all the info on the best martial arts trainer, not just in this universe, but the whole Bay Area. Go to amiracademy.com. Tell them I sent you. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Like a uh, $9,000 prostitute, please. Oh, do you have nine $1,000 ones? Yeah, good. And if you got an albino, send her up too. In uh, like 20 minutes, I'm going to be asleep, so get them up here. I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers, this whole bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. Eight, five, six, six, 49, 49 hop. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Looks like Nick Cannon is a proud dad of seven. <laughs> Nick Cannon has no idea in this whole wide universe how to pull out. <laughs> he just loves it, man. The TV personality seemingly welcomed his seventh child recently. It seems like he's having a kid every day, man. He's just out there producing kids. Now, hopefully, he's a genuine dad who doesn't uh, become a deadbeat. Because you don't want to have him keep producing kids and then the kids that are like the younger ones are getting neglected because he's having too many. Like, make sure you're not being a deadbeat in a canon. You make everything about you. So hopefully you're able to make it about your kids and not you. Rumored girlfriend Alyssa Scott appeared to confirm the news on Instagram over the July 4th weekend, announcing that she gave birth on June 23rd. The model included three black and white photos in her post. Caption I mean, but when you look at some of these models, I can see why Nick Cannon was having a hard time pulling her out. And I will love you for eternity. Oh, thank God. She featured two shots of herself with the newborn in her arms and reposted one on her Insta story, introducing her little one as Zen. Of course, she's wearing a onesie where the zipper is almost all the way down and you see the naked back. Oh, oh just times between the mother and the son you know nick has yet to publicly confirm his paternity and access hollywood has reached out for comment yeah nick what the hell are you doing bro on father's day Alyssa appeared to honor the mass singer host with a photo of herself showing off her baby bump mm -hmm. as a man who looks like nick held her growing belly yeah they're doing one of those edgy pictures where nick's turned to the side so you can't see his eyes at all so you think it's nick cannon 
but you just don't know. Rumors that the two were expecting a child together sparked back in May after Alyssa shared since-deleted maternity pics and revealed that her then-unborn son's name is Zen S. Cannon. Well, that's sad. This would be Nick's fourth baby in less than a year. <laughs> it's okay. Wrong button. <laughs> uh, let's rewind that. This would be Nick's fourth baby in less than a year. <laughs> One for each quarter. One for each season. The 40-year-old welcomed twin sons, Zion and Zillion, with DJ Abby De La Rosa last month. Abby announced the happy news by posting an Instagram video of herself cradling the cuties. Oh, man, I wonder what it looks like when the camera's off. Nick is also... What I mean by that is on camera, because I should probably explain something like that. Uh, when she's on camera, everything is perfect and dandy. But when the camera's off, is she just yelling, Nick, why don't we pull out? So dad to six-month-old daughter, Powerful, and four-year-old son, Golden, both of whom he welcomed with model... Yeah. Got to name your kid Golden. It's really edgy. It shows that you're an elitist. But, um, I mean, would you expect anything different from Nick Cannon? He just seems like a walking elitist. Oh, I'm going to have as many kids as possible. Oh, Jesus Christ, bro. And Meek Mill allegedly got into a... Let me rewind this. This involves Travis Scott and Meek Mill as they got into a fight at the Hamptons. Oh, sounds so relatable. Travis Scott and Meek Mill allegedly got into a screaming match at a Hamptons party and the internet just caught video of it all. But what caused this to all go down? Uh, I don't know, man. Let's get into it. Okay. So picture this. It's 4th of July weekend. You're at one of those infamous celebrity all-white parties along with celebs like Jay-Z, yeah. A-Rod, John Bon Jovi, City Girls, and... We got it. The famous people. Lil Baby. Yeah. And then two of your favorite rappers start screaming at each other. What I grabbed the video camera. Well, according to page six, if you attended Philadelphia 76ers co-owner Michael Rubin's 4th of July party, that's exactly what you stepped into. <gasps> this video was taken sneakily from a distance, yeah. and while we can't officially confirm it was Travis and Meek, you can allegedly hear Meek yelling and looking for Travis, then later Meek supposedly yelled, don't touch me, bro. I'm not touching nobody. I'm not even moving. Man, things really got heated between Meek Mill and Travis Scott. It's a bit hard to make out what they were saying in the rest. Ah, uh, just make out already. Rest of the 40-second video, and we couldn't quite hear Travis's voice. Oh, I hate you, Meek Mill. Oh, I hate you, Travis Scott. Oh, I hate you so much. God, you drive me nuts the way you're just sitting there in the corner minding your own business at a Hampton party. Oh, you drive me nuts the way you just... You're such a bad boy, Meek. Oh, it's so bizarre. Like, what are you fighting over? You're at a Hamptons party. <sighs> but rich people always got to create their own problems. Rich people can't just sit back and pay their taxes or whatever. Rich people just always have to create their own problems. Oh, everything's perfect? Let me fight with another rapper today. That just sounds like the way I want to spend my short lifetime, but... Hey, what the hell do I know? Maybe I'm incorrect. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. And I'm usually incorrect. Do Scott Disick and Maluma have beef? This would be Oh god, I'm worried about it. Forget about World War Three. The big fight is Maluma and Scott Disick. Do Scott Disick and Who the hell is Maluma? Do Scott Disick and Maluma have beef? This would be the move to make. Oh, geez. Some fans seem to think so. Yeah. While others think it's all just build up to the musician's new music video. Uh, that's probably it then. Who the hell is going, oh my God, I'm such a fan of Maluma. Oh, I just put him on in the club. Oh, he's so good. Boy. On Tuesday, the 38-year-old reality star started some drama by tweeting about the 27-year-old singer. Quote, yeah. WTF with this guy Maluma. Then Maluma. Yeah, you know Maluma slipped Scott Disick some cash and was like, hey, let's have some beef today so I can get my record sales up, my downloads. 
Luma retweeted the message and replied, quote, What's up with you? You want to be me so bad that you try to take what is mine. No one's trying to be you, bro. You're using Scott Disick for cloud. No one wakes up in the morning and goes, Oh my God, I want to be a cloud chaser today. And it didn't stop there. I think this is just the beginning. Scott yeah. retweeted Maluma's response and added, quote, Maluma, I didn't have to try that hard. Get over yourself. You're a joke. <laughs> wow. These shots that are being fired are really just creative. Get over yourself. You're a joke. Oh, what a witty and original comeback. Oh, wait, we're talking about Scott Disick. Why am I surprised? And while some fans took offense to Scott's fighting words, others... Well, he literally said, hi, I want to beat you up. There's really nothing offensive about that. Like, if you were offended by what Scott Disick said, literally, he literally said nothing. So that means you're offended by everything. ...insisted that the whole exchange was simply clever promotion for Maluma's upcoming music video. Exactly. Which is rumored to feature Scott. You're going to like... <laughs> oh, it feels so good, Scott. Okay, you're gonna love it. In fact, on Monday, it was announced during an Israeli TV show, Good yeah. Evening with Guy Pines, that Israeli model Eden Fines would be featured in a new music video from the Latin pop star. After flying to Miami in June to film her scenes, and all oh, I don't care anymore. Eight five six forty nine hobby. That's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. There's just so much tension in Hollywood, man. I mean, my tension is uh, just trying to figure out what Pornhub video to watch each day. Maybe your tension's from your boss being a douchebag. But can you imagine the tension of being a celebrity? Like, man, you're just always on edge. You always got to be fighting people, man. And, man, we were talking about Pete Davidson earlier. Oh, he's dating a new woman. How long is this going to last? Game, set, match. Phoebe Denever and Pete Davidson's relationship is definitely love-love. Yeah, it's lust lust The couple made their first public appearance together at mm. Wimbledon on Saturday, snuggling in the stands while watching the tennis tournament from the Lanson Suite at the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club. Oh, we know it's such a real relationship because there's pictures of them cuddling in public because he's never done that before been out and about um every girl he does oh but he's never been out and about and been like oh here's me perfectly cuddling with ariana grande here's me perfectly covering cuddling with this person no 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 he's always been a bragger so it's not that big of a deal Phoebe sported a long-sleeved olive green dress with a sweetheart neckline for the loved-up outing, while Pete went casual in a sweatshirt and baseball cap. Yeah. Though the pair oh, so casual and relatable. Or seemed to have fun cheering on Roger Federer, they mostly had eyes only for each other, stealing romance. Yeah, I don't really see Pete Davidson really caring about Roger Federer and his game. Um, Pete Davidson doesn't seem like somebody who cares about anybody but himself romantic looks and getting cozy in between smooches oh thank god the bridgerton star and the saturday night live comedian first sparked romance rumors back in march when pete was spotted in manchester england where phoebe lives they were later seen walking together in the british city the walk of shame in may pete got candid about his approach to dating revealing in an interview with the breakfast club that when he meets someone he's interested in he prefers to be upfront about exactly who he is. I'm a sociopath. Get used to it. I just, off the top, I'm like, hey, mm. I'm nuts. Here's all my issues. Here's what I do. Here's the thing. And every girl goes, I'm going to fix you. I'm going to be the one that changes you forever. And then they realize that by me saying a lost cause, it sounds like I'm insulting him, but mentally, they realize he's a lost cause, and then they dump him. But then he finds the new woman who goes, oh, I'm going to fix him. <laughs> Therapist is what happens, and that could either be a lot for someone. Oh, yeah, I slur my words. I'm so edgy because I got to let you know that I'm crazy, so I'm going to barely pronounce my words and talk from the bottom of my lap. Like, 
if I were to use my whole mouth, that'd be too much work, man. I'm so high on weed. Like, I kind of mumble my words. Shoes. Here's what I do. Here's the therapist. Life, yeah. This is what happens. And then what happens when you do drugs, man? You just kind of just don't really give a fuck. And that could either be a lot for someone, yeah. or it could be, you know, they they could, you know, most of the time people going through the same thing. They could be, oh, or they could be like, cool. That yeah. was really refreshingly honest. Uh, cool. I love the way you just begin yelling for no reason. Oh, it's so sexy. Uh, or sometimes it could be a little intense and weird, and people can't handle that stuff. Yeah, I would say you're not for everybody. And when it comes to making things last, Pete added that he believes independence, respect, and communication are what keeps a love connection going. And boner pills. If you trust and love the person and, uh, yeah. you know, they're, they're doing their thing or whatever, I, and you, you know, I think as long as you guys keep in touch, like... <laughs> yeah, or, uh, I'll text you once a week, see what the hell's going on with you. Uh, can understand each other. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll be fine. That was a weird answer. Um, that would that would be my advice. Got it. Oh uh, yeah, we should be taking love advice from Pete Davidson. <laughs> uh, I crack myself up here, man. I really make myself laugh. Uh eight five six forty nine happy. It's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. Uh this next wedding. Oh, I bet there was so much drama at this wedding. Because the way that the celebrities are making it seem like their wedding was so perfect, you know, it was really crazy. Gwen is showing off her bridal look. Gwen married Blake Sheldon. Woo! Ugh. What was that song? You're my minimum wage girl, or whatever they were doing. Yeah. Did you have a minimum wage wedding to go along with that song you guys released? You phony baloney scam artist. My God, who wouldn't want to be married to Gwen Stefani? You know he's got a big song now. And E.T. has new details about how she and Blake said I do over the weekend. <gasps> how? I have so many rings picked up. <laughs> the couple tied the knot on July 3rd in an intimate ceremony surrounded by family, which took place on Blake's ranch in Oklahoma. I saw this pretty private. On Monday, the marriage became Instagram official with Gwen posting this looped video of the bride getting her veil into position. Got it. She tagged Blake in the post, adding a heart and a prayer emoji next to Oh, thank God. I was worried if she was going to tag him and add a heart and a praying emoji. His name. We are just having the time of our lives. And yeah, it sounds believable. We are having the time of our lives. We need upgrade to be human. We never expected that this late in our lives. You never expected that this late in our life. Life, so we're just trying to savor every every moment together. Uh, we're just trying to savor every moment together. And Gwen's happy day caps off years of wedding speculation, as their fans have been dying to know when the big day would finally arrive. Man, these fans need to get a life. What is this millionaire? I'm never gonna meet. Get married. When am I gonna find out about this marriage? God, get a life. Is it still girlfriend today? I just want to double I check. I have read the magazines this morning. I don't know where we are. <laughs> are yet. The couple be God, am I just jealous of his good looks? Began dating in 2015, and they got engaged in October of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she's never not been supportive or a cheerleader or just... Well, she began dating you while you were already successful. Would she have dated you if you were singing at an open mic? Would she? Uh, just the most encouraging person I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Go make some more millions. Oh, such good encouragement. After Blake popped the question, Gwen posted this sparkly pic of her engagement ring to Instagram. So sparkly. She wrote, yes, please. <gasps> How would you say Gwen makes you a better man? Oh, my God. I, I don't, I can't remember. I don't want to remember I know, what I was I like before. Gwen, actually, if wow, that answers crazy. the question. Blake was one of the original judges on The Voice. Upon Blake, Blake, are you there, buddy? Are you okay? Did she hurt you? <laughs> Homeboy is so whipped. <laughs> this shit is bananas. B. A. I'm not going to do it. N A N A S. Oh, yeah. Am I projecting my insecurities onto other people? 
Nah. I would never do that. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour? Ah, oh, man. This following segment was brought to you by the Tampa Bay Hot Sauce Company. TampaBayHotSauce.com. There has all the locations where you can purchase it in person. But if you don't live in Florida, don't freak out. Don't have a panic attack. You can always order online. And when you go to TampaBayHotSauce.com, there it has some nice, spicy recipes. And finally, this is all you got to do. When you get that nice bottle of the Tampa Bay Hot Sauce Company, tag us at Ryan Hoppy Radio at Tampa Bay Hot Sauce. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. I got PhDs in four scientific disciplines. Really? Why do you think they call me Dr. Quinn? Um, I just thought that was a nickname. You know, like Dr. Dre. East Side. God, you're stupid. Hey, shut your hat. Hoppy's mind is like a circus, Mm -hmm. and you're all invited. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Got it. His Midwest accent and rants are like endorphins for your workout. You are listening to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck took their love from coast to coast over the 4th of July weekend. Why does this feel like a forced midlife crisis relationship? Like, I'm not saying they're not enjoying being with each other, but it also seems like they're trying to rub it into their ex's faces. Oh, look at us. We're out and about dating. Oh, good for you. It feels really good and it's really nice. First stop, Universal Studios in Hollywood. Oh, I thought you came to Orlando. I was like, wow, you flew down here. Lou and Ben looked super happy together as they walked through the theme park holding hands. I think oh, we- that's when you know it's official. It's when you got a picture of them walking around holding their hands. Like it wouldn't have been official before because you needed that picture. You needed that validation. We had chemistry as actors from the first moment we started working. Yeah, we just started banging already. Benifer kept it casual. The singer looked chic in a cream-colored crop top with yeah. matching pants, while the actor wore a zip-up sweatshirt over a white tee with denim jeans. And they got that typical smile that like couples will do, the famous couples when they're out and about, where they're like, ha, 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 we're laughing while talking, while walking down the block. Not at all. We're trying to make this look like a casual pose. It's like okay. a... Wrong button. We're trying to make this look casual. Ben, laugh a little bit while J-Lo flirts with you. Let's pose for the camera. (laughs) I don't know. This is a beautiful thing. And they weren't alone. The couple decided to make it a family affair by bringing the kids. Ben's... Oh, thank God. I was worried. Nine-year-old son, Samuel, and J-Lo's 13-year-old twins, Max and Emmy. Yeah. And Max and Emmy are getting so big. They are. They're eight already. They are. They're so big and... Damn. That's what happens. Kids grow up. So amazing and happy. An onlooker tells E.T. that the blended family had lots of fun together and visited attractions like the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Simpsons Land. Sounds like my second date I had with my girlfriend where I got really dizzy on the Harry Potter ride. And after the ride, she's like, Ryan, you you good? I'm like, I'm doing amazing. I'm totally not going to throw up. I just want to impress I just want to impress you beautiful girl that ended up being my girlfriend that I was able to manifest. I'm totally not going to throw up. Ugh. Ugh. Man. Could you imagine 
856-49-HOPPY. Well, you don't need to imagine because it did happen. It's 856, or that did happen. It's 856-494-6773. This next headline, man, is really spicy. This next headline is wild. Oh, these crazy celebrities in there. Public kissing. Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde have been romantically linked since January, but they just took their relationship to a whole new level after they were spotted packing on the PDA during a trip to Italy. That's when you know it's legit, especially when it's in like a little bit of like, obviously they're not breaking a bank by going to Italy, but they're spending a little bit of money. That's when you know things are good. It's when you're spending that money to show the PDA in Italy. Oh, they're having good sex. Let's get into it. Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde have been a rumored couple since January after meeting on oh, every day. They're getting closer and closer. Being on their set of their film, Don't Worry Darling. Since then, they've made headlines for holding hands, attending a wedding together for be- occasional mouth hugs, being spotted out and about in Los Angeles together, and for even moving bags into each other's homes. Yeah, that's fine. Right. It's really real. Oh, you're living with me now. I'm such a treat to be around. But even after all of that, many fans weren't convinced whether or not these two were actually romantically linked or just friends. Oh, you say he's just a friend. Oh, wait, wrong artist. Well, now Harry and Olivia confirm their romantic relationship by sharing some passionate kisses while on a boat in Italy. (coughs) Where's Kleenex? they've been vacationing for the past week. The two were also seen cuddling, dancing, sipping wine, and holding hands while aboard the private yacht. You know, it's really real. Like, they're really comfortable with each other when they're drinking that wine. Oh, they're so close as friends. Oh, that's when it's legit. And man, if they're drinking beer and we see them out drinking beer, that that means they're cool to hang out with. That means they're the cool couple. They're the couple everybody wants to get to know. Sounds like the perfect date to us. Yeah, we're going to kiss her ass. Page Six also reported that outside of their getaway to Italy, Harry and Olivia have been spending a lot of time together in England. Seems like everyone's hanging out in England, man. They're both living right. It's great to be in Britain. Now, Harry was just there filming his new movie, My Policeman. And Olivia- All right, I can't wait to see that movie. My Policeman. Could you imagine? I don't know what it's about and I don't care. And I don't feel like doing the research. Could you imagine, but I might do the research, if you were to have Harry play a cop? Oh, you'd be such an edgelord. Get over here, criminal. I'll sing you a song. Because I'm Harry. That's all I'm good for. Could you imagine him as a cop? Oh, it's not about him being a cop. It is. So, here's the plot line. I found the Wikipedia page. Set in the 1950s in Brighton, a gay policeman named Tom marries a school teacher named Marion while being in a relationship with Patrick. <laughs> the secret they share threatens to ruin them all. <gasps> that is not what I expected. I thought it was like, you know, here he goes on, arrests a few people and goes home and has me love with his wife and goes to bed. I thought it was that type of policeman. Oh, I got, I got to see this movie, man. I was hating on it, man. You can't judge a book by its cover or a movie by its name. I literally thought this was going to be the worst thing ever. This is great. This is spicy, man. Said in the 1950s, a gay policeman marries a school teacher named Marion while being in a relationship with Patrick. That is just, that is juicy, man. That is just some woke Hollywood. Sean Mendes and Camila Cabello celebrated two years together with a romantic getaway to the Caribbean, and they even shared sweet snaps of their anniversary with fans. They really packed on to PDA. They were really kissing each other, letting each other know how they feel. I wonder what it's like, like kissing in public and having a paparazzi see it. Like when I kiss my girlfriend, oh, it's so amazing. When I'm kissing my girlfriend, I, I like that no one's watching. But like, I wonder how genuine and how much of the butterflies can really be transferred through that kiss when you're out and about and you have a hundred paparazzi taking pictures of you. Oh, it's such a romantic moment. 
Let's get into it. Like many other celebrities this weekend, Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello dialed up the PDA in celebration of hitting the two-year mark in their relationship. We gotta let everybody know. We can't just have a relationship just going on. We gotta let everybody in Hollywood know, oh, this relationship's gonna be together forever and ever. This is just set for success. The way you gotta let everybody know it's your two-year anniversary. You're totally not ignoring the fact that you're overcompensating. The couple made their way to the paradise beaches of the Caribbean, giving us all a glimpse into their special occasion on their socials. Oh, so they were able to make the post. Thank God. I have no idea what that means. And theories are circulating that Kim Kardashian may have attempted to put Kanye West under a conservatorship during their relationship. And especially with everything going on with the Free Britney movement right now, fans are going off. All righty, man. It's a lot. She's just really yelling at me. Let's get into it. So clearly the topic of hashtag free Britney is on everyone's minds, especially these last few weeks. Got it. But could there have also been a hashtag free Kanye movement? Uh, That would not have been as universally loved. People would be like, oh, thank God. Some people are speculating that Kim Kardashian tried to get her ex-husband, Kanye West, into a conservatorship similar to Britney's, and here's why. Why? Think back to summer 2020. Because he's crazy? We know it was a rough time in the world, but let's go back specifically to Kanye West's presidential campaign rally. Yeah, remember when he ran for president? How could we forget? In that speech, Kanye spilled some pretty personal details. Oh, yeah, we, we, we're going to get an abortion. I totally forgot about that. About he and Kim's reproductive decisions. That's one way to put it. Then after Kanye's July 2020 rally, he tweeted that Kim and her mom, Chris, were trying to lock him up. He Man, Kanye West just sounds like bundles of fun wrote in a now deleted tweet they tried to fly in with two doctors to 5150 me oh man he also claimed kim was trying to fly- let me read the whole tweets this is just good times last year kanye losing his mind here's his first tweet they tried to fly me in with two doctors for a 5150 me i've been trying to get divorced since kim met with meek for prison reform <laughs> He knew what was up when she was hanging out with me. He also tweets in this second tweet, Kim was trying to fly to Wyoming with a doctor to lock me up like on the movie Get Out because I cried about saving my daughter's life. Oh, my God. He just sounds like a psychopath. Was trying to fly to Wyoming with a doctor to lock me up like on the movie Get Out because I cried about saving my daughter's life Mm -hmm. yesterday. Kanye later apologized for sharing such personal details, tweeting, Oops. I would like to apologize to my wife Kim for going public with something that was a private matter. Uh, It's as private as it comes. There's really nothing more private. Did not cover her like she has covered me. To Kim, I want to say, I know I hurt you. Please forgive me. Obviously, these two are now in the process of getting a divorce. Yeah, there was really no forgiveness there. And we're not going to go through all the drama involved. Yeah, we don't really care. 856-49 Happy All. We got a few more minutes here. Hey guys, it's Allie for Hollywood Life with your music roundup, starting with Nicki Minaj Why? and Drake, because fans might get a new collaboration soon. Uh, Nick- 2011 called. <laughs> Nicki Minaj and Drake, just what we need. <laughs> oh my god. Nicki Minaj shared on Instagram yesterday that she had a surprise for fans, and later on that night, Drake posted a photo on his story indicating he was in the studio with the Starship rapper. Ahead of the yeah. Re-release of Nikki's Beam Me Up Scotty mixtape, Drake appeared on Instagram Live with Nikki and the two... And they just began banging it out. ...who caught up on life as new parents and talked about music. The mixtape included the Six God rapper as he made an appearance on Nikki's Seeing Green alongside Lil Wayne, which... I didn't even know the rappers made mixtapes anymore. I thought they just made a crappy two-minute song and were like, Oh, time to upload it to SoundCloud. It was a long overdue cash money reunion. Now that the... Oh, thank God the cash money got together. What a great band that was. Alongside Lil Wayne, which was a long overdue cash money reunion. Now that those two are linking up again, fans are speculating whether or not they were getting together for their kids' play date or for certified lover. 
what did Nicki Minaj do to manifest being relevant again? Oh my God, we are covering her like it's, oh geez, we are covering her like it's 2012. Boy, Drake has recently changed his Instagram bio to the word certified and he- Oh, he's so certified. He's such a bad boy. The way he's from the suburbs of Toronto and he played a disabled kid on Degrassi. Oh, he's such a bad boy. Did promise fans that the album would be out before the end of summer. Oh, Do you guys think Nicki will be on CLB? Oh. Let me know in the comments All below. Right. But speaking of new music, Azalea Banks has returned with her new- All right, I don't, I don't care. Hey guys, it's Allie for Hollywood Life with an MCU roundup movie news for you, starting with actor Steven Dorff slamming oh. Black Widow. During an interview with Independent, Dorff revealed that he thinks the film looks like a bad video game. <laughs> Because it does. And went on to say that he's embarrassed for Scarlett Johansson. He said, I'm sure she got paid five, seven million bucks, but yeah. I'm embarrassed for her. Oh, I don't want to be in these movies. Got I it. really don't. I'll f oh, so then take back the money you made. Oh, I don't want to be in these movies that have made me millions of dollars. Oh, God, I'm so embarrassed. Then return the money. Until then, shut up. Find that kid director that's going to be the next Kubrick, and I'll act for him instead. Switching gears to an upcoming Marvel TV series, She-Hulk, because rumor has it that Megan Thee Stallion will be a part of the project. <laughs> Hell yeah! According to the YouTube channel Everything Always, Meg will allegedly make an appearance in the new Disney Plus show as herself. Oh, that's going to be a treat. <laughs> there is going to be no outrage there. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be exciting. Don't get excited just yet. After the reveal, the channel's host, Michael Roman, said, Now I remind you guys here at the channel at least twice a week to take everything, including this video, oh. that doesn't come directly from Marvel Studios, which this doesn't, with a grain of salt. All right. I don't really care anymore. He continued, however, I vetted this with two separate sources involved with yeah. production. I'm almost 99.9% .9 sure when I come out and report this kind of exclusive. God. But okay, let's move back to Please. the movie side of things because over the weekend, Spider-Man stars Tom Holland and Zendaya were caught smooching after years of denying their Yeah, they're like, ah, oh, whatever, I banged you out enough, let's at least uh, admit it. Romance. The moment quickly went viral, and TMZ reports before the PDA, the co-stars were spotted hanging out together. I wonder what it's like when these celebrities, uh, who cares anymore? I wonder what it's like when these celebrities go viral, like if their phone just begins blowing up. At a Thai food place near Universal Studios on the outskirts of central LA. Witnesses told the site that they didn't show any signs of PDA at the restaurant, but they appeared to be having a stimulating conversation. Oh, yeah. However, by the next day, the two were locking lips in a car. Yeah. We got it on camera. Oh, what is it about the Spider-Man movies that make the stars want to date eventually? First, Toby and Kirsten, no. Andrew and Emma. I don't know what your point is. Uh, now Tom and Zen. And finally, let's talk about some unfortunate and weird news. What? Over the weekend, fans noticed that Iron Man, aka Robert Downey Jr., unfollowed Chris Evans, Tom Holland, and other Marvel co-stars on Instagram. No! Oh, man. If that's your biggest problem in your life, you live a good life. This sent plenty of fans into a frenzy, but as of this recording, RDJ is still following them all on Twitter, which oh. suggests there's no bad blood. Oh, it I don't care. 856. 49 happy 856-494-6773 this show has also been brought to you by westchaseprinting.com at westchaseprinting on instagram at dj tone tampa on instagram yeah you can have yard signs business cards whatever the hell you need decals when you go to westchaseprinting.com and you get that invoice tell them i sent you but you got to make it happen. Also, this is being brought to you by RichKBarber.com. Rich Keeley. He's over at Salon Loft on Kennedy, right next door to the McDonald's. Sign up for an appointment at RichKBarber.com. And then when you sit down in his chair, tell him I sent you. We are heard on the Quad Pod Network, QODPOD.com slash Ryan Hoppy. ZRadioLive.com every Thursday at 5 p.m. RyanHoppyRadio.com and Ryan Hoppy Radio on all forms of social media, but Snapchat because I can't change the name at Hoppy Radio. 
You can listen on every single major platform that has a podcast by searching up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio. Well, I'm signing off now. I really hope my show changed the way you think about things, not at all. I really hope my show was exciting, not at all, but no, 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 no. Why am I talking myself down? It's going against the law of attraction. I'm the greatest of all time. Well, at least I think so. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour is now over. Hoppy Hour is now over. Hoppy Hour is now over.